Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings. Welcome to all of you. The televising of this Mass today is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Swift Current, Saskatchewan, in memory of her husband and deceased family members in a thanksgiving for the televised Mass. The second is an anonymous do donor from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, in thanksgiving for favors granted, for deceased parents and relatives, and for the souls in purgatory, for the priests who offer the televised Mass, and in thanksgiving. And our thanks to you for the gift of this telecast. And so we begin as we should always begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we gather this day, we know that we are in the presence of the risen Christ. We have been gifted so much, and yet so often we haven't expressed gratitude for the gifts we've received, and expressed gratitude by the way we live. And so we ask forgiveness. We ask forgiveness of God, and we ask forgiveness of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joy of our redemption through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year. They met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. And of 
Zion, it shall be said, this one and that one were born in it. For the Most High himself will establish it. As he registers the peoples, this one was born there. Singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. And so the Jews gathered around and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah... Tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand, for the Father and I are one. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel text is taken from the same chapter as this past Sunday's gospel, and continues with the same theme. I am the good shepherd. In the Old Testament, we encounter the promise of God that he will come as the good shepherd, caring for the sheep, rescuing them from the the places to which they have been scattered, feeding them, tending to the weak, the injured, and the lost. And Jesus identifies himself as fulfilling God's promise, The image of the Good Shepherd actually defines Jesus, who he is and what he is about. It's an image of our God. And as usual, Jesus bases his parable on daily life. His listeners are very familiar with rural life and the close bond uniting the shepherd and the sheepfold. In Jesus' time and culture, The metaphor of shepherd and sheepfold communicated something very, very important. But I suspect that many of us find ourselves probably attracted to the person and teaching of Jesus rather than a shepherd or a conceptual idea of what God is like. In the Gospel of John, we find some very beautiful and original images of Jesus that complement the idea that only Jesus can fulfill the most fundamental needs of the human person. I am the bread of life. Whoever is nourished by Jesus will not hunger. 
I am the light of the world. Whoever follows Jesus will not walk in darkness. I am the good shepherd. Whoever listens to the voice will find life. I am the gate, a threshold that leads to new life, a new way of understanding and living life. Who enters, whoever enters through me will be saved. He will not lose his life. He will save it and live it to the full. All of the images complement the idea that only Jesus can fulfill the most fundamental needs of the human person, that Jesus is central to all. You know, some of us, I'm sure, remember pictures of Jesus gently holding a lamb, and we're often presented images of a smiling shepherd from the Middle East with a, a very cuddly, clean, and kind of fluffy lamb tucked under his arm. But much less romantic and perhaps more accurate and robust is the earliest known statue of the Good Shepherd at Caesarea Maritima in Israel. The legless remnant has a huge heavy sheep draped over the shepherd's shoulders. But that image is also a far cry from the, the shepherds, the pastor Cetos, that I encountered in Peru tending the sheep. In Peru and Bolivia, the shepherds were usually children of school, year, <coughs> school age, grade school age. And in parts of our world today, where flocks of sheep are numbered in the thousands, as in New Zealand, shepherds are on horseback or motorcycle. But it's very interesting to note, yes, it's a totally different cultural context from that of the first century, but we can still learn about God from the teaching of the Good Shepherd. The wandering figure of the Good Shepherd anxiously tending his sheep to the point where he's willing to surrender his life for them is the image that Jesus uses about himself. It's an image of God that Jesus wants us to know and to appreciate. As Dennis McBride writes, in Jesus, we find a mixture of tenderness and toughness care and self-sacrifice, which summarizes really his own practice of leadership. It's not a leadership of defensiveness and detachment, but rather a leadership of physical involvement and self-sacrificial love. In the Good Shepherd's foolish, extravagant love, his own life matters less than that of his sheep. Father McBride, the Redemptorist, goes on to say that when we see how Jesus actually behaves as a leader, we see that tenderness and that courage. Jesus tackles his opponents face to face. He confronts those who steal the dignity of the little ones. He names the wolves in sheep's clothing. And he's willing to leave his enemies looking very sheepish. He warns his followers about the rough terrain ahead, and he goes there before them. He is defensive when people attack his own followers, but he's realistic about people's backward ways. He endures isolation and insult. He faces his own fear, but he stays loyal. He risks being slaughtered himself, and he lays down his life for his sheep. In his life and in his death, Jesus sought out the lost, the last, and the least. And when he wanted to speak of a tender God, he told the people about a shepherd who, when he loses one of his sheep, leaves the other sheep and goes off in search of the lost one. It's why Jesus invites us to imitate him in boundless solidarity with our brothers and sisters, especially the most exploited and the weakest. Gustavo Gutierrez expresses it most beautifully in the following words. He said, this is the core of our imitation of Jesus. Being a shepherd is an option for life, not a profession. We are not hired hands who accompany the sheep out of self-interest, so often looking after our own interests and prestige, and not after the people we claim to be serving. Yes, we're called to be shepherds of our brothers and sisters. We have a responsibility to them, which we must freely assume. Commitment to the poor with their pains and their hopes, their limitations and their struggles implies a daily option and a constant risk of misunderstanding and hostility. But as Christians and as disciples, 
we are challenged to love our neighbor as ourselves. To follow the Good Shepherd certainly challenges our way at times of leaving people for lost or at times judging people as lost. Join with me as we pray. We pray this day and remember in, in a very special way the many hundreds of people who join us via television. Every week, many of them write in and with their intentions that they ask that we remember in this celebration. And so for all of them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. The Lord we pray in a very special way for refugees, refugees in the Middle East, refugees who have moved from Africa to the coast of Italy seeking a new life, we pray that somehow justice will be done for so many people who live in such incredible insecurity that all of us may find a just solution. For them, we pray to the Lord. The Lord our and we pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace where those places who are, find themselves at war. We pray for peace in our homes, peace in our hearts. And we pray that each one of us can become a peacemaker. And for that grace for all of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Thanks, Joe. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the, for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. And therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness, and make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other then a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer of Father Carlo Maria Martini. Lord, help me enter into that peace which consists in having put my life in your hands. Amen. And let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Have a good day. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. Christ our Lord is risen today. Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C 2M6. of your favorite hymns from the past six missions. These 25 hymns will take you out of yourself and for a time at least put you in the presence of God. Indeed.